kind of so sad. I saw the TV, but I didn't know if it was boring or not. Uh, my my it's not. <laughs> I, I, I think, think I gotta get rid of it. Rid of it. It's, it's actually, actually cursing, cursing my game, game right now. Right now. The, the team, team, you know what? The team, they just went the frick out. That's so hard. Noise. I so mad at my teammates. It's the item, man. There's humongous spike in the for sure. That is a ginormous element for me. A ginormous element for Lux. A freaking just ginormous, ginormous all across the board. We'll love, love to see it. I'm swept. Doesn't matter. Is there a queen up tight? That is the flash I've been waiting for! That was incredible, team. All, all I had to do was sell a magi and you start pulling out things like that? that? If I had known that, that I would have sold it 15 minutes ago. <laughs> we need a terrorist moment. Have you guys considered winning your lanes? <laughs> Yeah, she's, she's dead, dead for sure. sure. <laughs> <laughs> we, we got, got a free pack, pack did, I didn't get a chance, chance to all you the sun last so long, long but that's, that's so good, good for spirit. spirit. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, that, that, that equalizes the trade there. That was very nice. nice. We're mega, mega split. split. I, I, I need a buy engage. Oh, that bitch. Okay, call it not I'm not, not going to cover it, but that'll do. That was good in the Jesus area. Possible, possible, man, potentially. Back up, back up, back Don't walk on the trap. Don't walk on the trap, I'm recording. You were going to walk on the trap, dude. You were going to walk on it. You don't think I didn't see you path towards that. Silas, don't think I didn't see that. Now, the question is, did them already have you saw it? It probably didn't matter. I, I still got- OH THAT'S SO JUICY DUDE! Lay him up. Freaking lay him up dude. That's, that's all I'm saying. Dude, dude this, this was, was a good game. game. This, this was a close game. game. It could have gone like, like they stomped stomp early, early and then we, we did, did pretty okay. okay. My PC- I got bricks! My PC got bricks! Oh, well, well, the kind of enemies are sending it. The fire enemies. Listen, I don't know the enemy team don't see that way cause like... They lost, lost, but like, like that was a four minute PvE game, game where both teams were trying and nobody quests, right? You never, never ever, ever see that. that. That's, That's like GG's and claps to like both teams for sure. Look at that, the mathematical time count of DPS. Let's It's actually started and I didn't actually tell it to. Oh, not that that's going to mean anything. It's going to be about 10 more minutes until I start. Yay! Can I leave the save for today? And will it just, or will it just get in my way and annoy me? Honestly, I should just be wearing it on my head, but it's so uncomfortable for my likings most of the time. Let's just wear it like it's intended. Let's try and behave myself now. One day I'll get my own proper headset. Instead of this, yeah. It's actually too hot for this top. I'm not going to last an hour doing anything on this. Get. Lighting be good! Lighting be nimble! Lighting, lighting be nimble, lighting be No. I'm not remembering this quote too well at all. Yeah. 
Probably hurt the. Probably gonna hurt after an hour, but I just still have to do, I guess. This will have to do. Um, let's put the volume of this just up a bit, though, so because like, at the moment it looks like it's just barely. Uh, I yeah, I do want it to at least have a bit more to it. Okay. it before now I can sit that just a tiny bit getting this correct it's just mm, five ten minutes of just sound checks and checking yourself out in the camera mirror fucking narcissist <laughs> wait there we go I was wondering where the enemies went I knew there were enemies on the screen what am I talking Yeah, that still needs fixing. Still needs fixing. Still needs fixing. I will be fixing that very quickly, I reckon. When I get into this. I'm going to just make myself a quick coffee. Make myself a quick coffee. Just so I can have the energy and the buzz and the all I need to this.
again! Where have they gone, my enemies? They've gone off the screen! I had enemies on here and everything! Where have they gone? Oh, okay, get, get back on Get back there! Get there. Yeah, get back on there. Hmm. One of the downsides to having this clickety clackety keyboard. No matter where I put this, everyone's going to hear it as soon as I start typing on it really loudly. An inevitability. Fifty-eight minutes in. I'm just about ready then. The fudge. Okay, okay, I think there's uh, enough looking at that for now. To be fucking honest, that's more than enough of that. So. But, uh, is this good looking? This is fine and dandy looking. It will have to do looking, kinds of looking. I think this is fine and dandy. Now then! Like I was saying! Now then! Time for another dandy dandy boo boo episode of doing programming game stuff! Yeah, that doesn't fly off the tip of the tongue at all. Never will. And now we're going to look at uh, this episode. I'm going to do some quick fixes and get into adding sprites into this game because looking at rectangles is getting old, very old. So my first quick fix that I'm planning to do to this project is, I've noticed a problem. If I hit the backspace button and I hit enter and it just auto restarts the game. 
The mistake I am making here is in the uh, game loop. Is it in the game loop? No, no. Update loop. Yeah, state here. All this stuff here. And really what I just need to do really is just say it down here. Keyboard dot keys 13 dot prep released equals false. And I'm going to say the same thing for number 8. So the enter key and the backspace key, every frame is just going to be hit to set, you know, set to false. I don't, so I don't need this line here anymore. I don't need this line here anymore. This is all cut, you know, nothing's going to change about the game except for that it's going to fix one or two minor nuisance cases. This doesn't need to be here anymore, and since this is now a, a if statement of one command after it, I don't need a, the, all the braces around it anymore. And the same thing there, and the same thing here. There we go. Now, as you can see, if the keyboard, if the, uh, I think it's enter key, isn't it? Yeah, if the enter key was released whilst we were in a state of normal, it will pause the game. If the, st if the game is in a pause state and the enter key is released, then we'll resume the game. If the backspace key was released, then we remake the game. And if we're this in the end state and the keyboard is uh, the backspace key is released, we remake the game. If ev in all cases, if I hit the backspace now and then hit enter, it's not going to just auto restart the game. That's going to undo that little uh, mistake that I was making. <laughs> I noticed one other mistake as well, I don't know how, this isn't causing a uh, error, but this keyboard, keyboard, where is it being, where is it being like, announced? I, I don't get this at all, but there should be, uh, that game with high level menu state time, there is no keyboard anywhere. I'm just going to put it up here anyway. Let keyboard just let be known there. I don't know how it's not causing an error, but there should be some kind of error because, I, you know, there's no um, global announcement of it. So I don't know how the scope of this function is picking up on the keyboard keys when it shouldn't even exist outside of the scope of the uh, onload function here. So we first announced the keyboard here. Keyboard equals a make keyboard, but I never said let keyboard or anything at the top, so I don't know how that's cause, not causing an error, but there we go. There we go. Now, in order to do something, I want to quickly do a... Uh, I'm going to disable this whole resize function stuff, just for the sake of stopping the, the scaling going on. Ooh, uh, it's not really meant to do that. Okay, this is maybe not the. Maybe this isn't what I wanted it to do. Let's instead go to onload. I'm going to get rid of the request animation frame, and I'm going to do the uh, stage to draw. Is it stage to draw context? I'm just gonna. I just want to get all this stuff here a sec. So stage draw context, and I'm going to un just kill out the resize function. So where, where is that? Three four three. I don't know how that's there, but okay. Oh, I might have been some other mistake. Right, there we go, just a sec. Um, I just wanted to get this... Uh, I just want it not to resize. There we go, I think this is correct. 
Now I'm doing a alt print screen so that it captures a screenshot of just this window up the top here. And now I want to take things into uh, Photoshop for us to do some drawing. Initially, I wanted to be able to do all of this in my tablet, my uh, iPad Pro, and be like, look at this, if you have this handy tool that only costs you about £1,500, you can then use it to do all your drawings and sprite drawings inside this handy dandy Medibang Paint app that you can get for free on your pens on your iPad Pro. Only problem was that for whatever reason, I was unable to... Um, I was unable to get any streaming whatever to work, it just didn't want to behave. And all of the apps that were designed to broadcast your iPad onto the computer, unless you have a Mac, which I don't, it's just going to be an asshole. So we're going to do this all in Photoshop instead. It's a, it doesn't matter too much, I guess. You could still make a lot of this stuff work in other apps for drawing and painting. But I just fancy doing it in Photoshop because later on it'll be easier for me to also play around with the timeline that uh, is right at the bottom. And if I have... I'm going to move my cat, myself over to here a sec so you can see the timeline at the bottom here. I might let you, I can use this later and show you how to do animation. But for now... I'm going to hit Control M for a new opening a new file, and the width and height are going to be set to the print screen that I created earlier, so that when I hit Control V, I have this area just about covered nicely. Now what I want to do is I want to crop just the area that I'm going to be uh, doing my sprite pixel artwork in, I reckon. So I want the I'm using the M tool for the uh, rectangle selection marker to capture this area. And now that I've selected this whole area, I'm going to hit C, uh, the C button for crop and hit enter twice. Now we have got this area completely cropped. I'm going to create two new layers and group them. In the first layer, I'm going to go black. And in the second layer, I'm going to go white. And then I'm going to set both of them to like 50-50. Uh, so it kind of creates this foggy, phasey, whatever effect over the uh, over here. This now I'm going to be just creating on some sprites of characters. So let's create some new layers. I'm going to call, start naming them player. There's a key. There is an enemy. There is a Door. and then there is a goal post we'll also have to make floor and the walls I'm not going to make some really complicated tile set or anything to handle the floor and the walls they're just going to be one big image by themselves so that we can get through this a little bit faster and now, to think about what do I want the player to look like. One other thing, actually, just before we start, is I do not want to draw sprites for an 800 times 600 screen. I'm going to draw it for half that amount. So let's go into here. Um, let's slow down a sec, okay? Image at the top. Click on Image Size or Control alt i and you open this box up. And you can set the width and the height here. I'm going to use percent instead and set them both to 50% and make sure that uh, resample image is set to nearest neighbor nearest neighbor we want to preserve the hard edges there we go and now I've made it 50% easier to draw my characters because instead of being a 32 by 32 size square or okay it's gonna be 16 by 16 that's fine Right, so let's think about what I want my player to look like. I seem to be going with this theme in my head that I want to draw like fishes or something like that, you know, or things that live on the bottom of the ocean. What I want to pick then is a sort of teal and cyan colour. I'm going to just draw what will kind of look like a starfish, I fancy. Yes, I fancy a starfish. 
Call him Patrick or whatever you want, guys. I don't mind. It's going to look awesome. And he's going to... I've used the... i pressed the B button so I could use the brush. But to be more exact, I'm using the pencil tool. As the pencil does not come with anti-aliasing and all that stuff. And... Uh, um, Yeah. Yeah. There we go. One, and we're just basically drawing in one pixel with all this. Oh. Mm -mm. There we go, we're going to give him a smiley. Now I fancy drawing borders on these guys. So I'm going to give the bottoms of this character this uh, darker colour. One, one thing I like to do that I don't know where I've learnt it or picked it up from, maybe it's just an actual like real life study thing, is that whenever I make a darker colour to something, like, you know, I want to create a shadow effect, what I'll often do is just add a tiny bit of hue going towards the colour blue, and then I will still like to keep the uh, saturation somewhat high, but I'll turn the brightness down a bunch. So there's a slight, you know, amount of, there's a slight hint of blue being added into the shadows. And then when you're going the opposite way to highlight something, you do a similar effect. You want to make it, um, you want to give it a bit of yellow. So let's imagine it, the hue bar just going a bit towards the yellow. Here we go. Oh, it's not really. I need to take some more saturation out of this. There we go. Now we've got like. Oops. There we go. I've got my uh, fingers on Control Z, so if I make a mistake, that's where, you know, uh, Control Z undo. And I think that's good enough to call my player character. Just a tiny bit of more adjusting. I press the E button to go to the eraser, and the eraser is also set to pencil mode. One pixel big. That's good. I would say that's good for a uh, our first character, the starfish, in which is going to be the player character. Now I want to create a uh, bad guy, an enemy, and in my head something like a sp something spiky came to mind. Something spiky. So I want to make it like a big block here. First off. Make sure you're in the right layer for you what you want to do. Always make sure you're in the right layer, guys. There we go. Oh, pardon me. <laughs> Coffee burped. I must remind myself, though, that I have coffee. I'm blessed. Try to remember, like, what those urchin things look like in uh, one of that Super Mario world whenever you're underwater and they're sort of like they're spiky. Right, that's enough of that uh, butcher of that tune, and we want to at least make this look. Sp Bike here. And there we go. I think that uh, is that sixteen by I think this is sixteen by sixteen. No, it ain't. Wait, there we go. So I'm just checking this is Oh, it needs to be one Thinner, one pixel thin. So press the M button to uh, select the area. After selecting the area, 
I'm pressing the V button to switch to the moving tool and then using the left right key just to give it that one you know nudge in that direction now I have my self I'm just doing lots of E's and B's just to swap between the two Yeah, it looks pretty spiky. Now I want to create, uh, let's see, like I said, we're going to create a shadow effect. So we're making it darker by a lot and not just changing the, uh, there we go. And then to, I'm going to give it some highlight as well. So first off, I'm trying to get set the hue towards the color yellow, adding a bit more brightness and maybe taking a bit of saturation out. Maybe a bit too much red. Yeah, that's better now. Oops. Go. And then I'm going to give this shadow to the little buttony face. I'm trying to think, I might do a bit of an inverse trick so the top is going to be like the shadowy, darker part of him. Yeah, it's a bit more blue. There we go. It's a bit more, that's a bit better. And then over here is uh, where we're going to make it a bit brighter. Well, maybe I'm just going to do it like this. And then we want to give it some eyes. Let's give it some eyes. Yeah. I wanted to give it that little one pixel going in towards the middle. Go. Hmm. I'm going for a handle bar mustache for God knows what reason. Maybe it's because of all that Naruto boy I've been playing lately. I want it to do these uh, handle bar mustaches. Let's make it a bit darker. There we go. So the a lot more darker. And then this, I want it to be a bit more red. This, I kind of want it to be a lot more blue. A lot less, uh... There we go. Uh, it's still a bit nice. Let's make it a bit darker there. And... I still feel like I can see too much colour in it, but... That's the enemy. That's the layer down. That's nice. And that's nice. Now I need to draw what's going to look like uh, something that passes as an excuse for a key. Yes, the enemy could still just do with these little tweaks. Wait a sec. Mm. Alright, so it is. That's. I just leave that alone. Let's leave that alone there now. Now the key. And I want it to be another 16 by 16. I use the M key to go to select a tool, and then I use select the area, and that's fine. 
E to kind of raise a little bit because I didn't want it to select that big an area. And now I just erase, bruh, pencil, erase. Lots of this kind of stuff is going to be happening. Yeah. It's not a very good looking key, probably, but it's fine. We're going to add some uh, blue, add a bit of blue hint, and take a bit of saturation down and darkness down. There we go. Mm, maybe a bit too much in that vein. Uh, a bit more orange. A bit more of an orange look to it, please. And there we go, let's get a count as, as, oh no, 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 this is just not gonna work, is it? Right, we're gonna, oops, not this big in there. Well, let, there we go, just um, raise this all out because I'm starting to hate it. It's starting to look terrible. I want it to at least somewhat look like a good key as bad as this is uh, going, and we are back in business. I haven't even played the game, by the way, if you recognize where that hum is coming from. It's just on one of my uh, wish lists. Cannot wait for it to go on a Steam sale or something. Then I'm going to buy that out of it and play it all for a while. So it definitely looks like it's one of those games that I would regret missing. I'm going to do this and set to two. That's fine. Let's give it now that orange nest. Bit of orange. There we go. To have these shadows play. And then on the opposite spectrum, there we go, we're going to add a bit more. Yeah. I don't know man, I just can't tell what I want to do with this key to make it look good, it's just... So, uh, right, move these all, merge these all up and just call that the key is done. Sometimes, by the way, if you're trying to erase and keep the line straight, you hold the shift button and that will accomplish that for you. Yeah, I'll just stick to two colors for this. Now to create a door, I want to pick a sort of more reddish color to begin with and lots of darkness. And if I remember right, this one is a bit of a bigger than normal square. Was it 40 by 40 pixels? 26 by 26. 
let's go to this. Um, I'm looking at my function. Make level door is a rectangle, fifty by fifty. Ooh. I'm not seeing fifty by fifty here. In fact, it's maybe fifty by fifty. No, wait, it's because I resized this and it's not. So I want it to be twenty five by twenty five. My door is going to be twenty five by twenty five. Right, and then... Oh, I'm using the wrong layer again. Copied, deleted, pasted onto the door layer. Good enough. Now in here I want to... I like this colour I had over here. So I'm going to use that. There we go, and yes, about three pixels, okay, three pixels, three pixels, keep some consistency there. Good consistency. Control Z, undo. Yeah, that's fine. Now to go to the dark blue area and set the darkness a lot. Now I'm going to just create this keyhole effect going on here. Make it one pixel bigger. Then what I want to do is uh, give it a bit more brightness, a bit towards the yellow, and then just you know give it a, a bit too much, a bit too much saturation. Take a bit more, take a bit of it out, so it looks a bit more grey, but it's still kind of like a shade of blue. Take this down one more. Yeah, there we go. That looks good for a key lock door bit. The goalpost, what did I want last time? I in the end kind of just made it look like a cutout of the player. Honestly. Honestly, honestly, honestly. So I need another 25 by 25 looking sprite that's going to be about this big. 24, 25. And let's just initially give it a but ugly bright red colour, like full on, full saturation and brightness. Now I can imagine placing the player on it, and then I'm using using the V key with the the V key, using the button V to go to the move tool. I'm going to now use the up, down, left, right to start figuring out how to center this player on here. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One, two, three, four. So like that is kind of what I'm looking to do, and then I just want to hold control key, click on this thumb picture for the player down here to create this outline of him, and then behind him, there we go, now I have this outline drawn. This is kind of where I'm looking to create a uh, white outline, I suppose. And I'm going to just basically Keep making it thicker until it's resembling the uh, until it stops looking like a Christmas tree. It's like you know, it's still meant to look like a outline of a starfish. I can hold the shift key if I want as well to draw lines. It's hard to always remember where you started in this. Let's keep going around. Using the Alt key to get the color picker tool out. Learning how to use Photoshop 101 with Caleb. Keeping your hands on the keyboard to quickly do Control Z. Press the Alt key to swap between colors. Yeah, just. W key for the magic wand. And now I just... Wait a sec, W key, I'm going to get the uh, 
There we go. Just this outline of the player is going to be on top, on a layer on top. So now when I do this stuff, go and one more for good measure going to the that way, and another one going up. Delete that from the selection, delete this thing on top, and then delete the reds. Now I've got this, this is the goalpost. I know it's not the best goalpost. It is the it is the best goalpost, actually. I don't know who you're talking to. This is the best goalpost you have ever seen. I, I don't want to hear any complaints, keep people. It's the best goalpost you've ever seen. Now in a sprite-like fashion, I'm going to hide all of these layers. So now all we're seeing are the actors that are going to be in this game. We want to, I think I want to put the enemy just right here actually. Then the key to the right of the enemy, the door to the right here, and then the goalpost just to the right here. I'm going to create a selection that's going to cover just all of these actors here. Hit enter twice after to crop it. Hit C to go to the crop tool, then hit enter twice. Right, right, right. Slow down, kid. Step one, create a selection surrounding your characters with the M tool, M. So create selection, then you hit C to go to the crop tool. Then you hit enter twice to crop the picture. That's what you do. And now we have this cropped out area. I'm going to do a control shift S and I'm going to save it into here as uh, actors.pneg file type pneg and it's going to be uh, compression smallest slow interlace none okay so now we've saved that one I'm going to I'm just going to control Z a sec so that I get my uh, original sized you know before we did the cropping that's out now I want to group all these actors and just hide them because now I'm going to be focusing on drawing walls. And uh, how I want to do that? Let's see. Let's see. I want to just do this. This is going to look super duper butt butt hurting lazy. But I I don't see this. Yeah, about 50/50 color. And then I'm going to create some highlights to go over it. Up to the brightness about, and there we go. I'm going to make all the walls on one side be highlights, while all the walls on the other side be shadows. That's what I'll be doing. I fancy uh, just rounding out these corners. In fact, you know what? This layer 4 here that's overlaying the uh, walls, the way I'm drawing the highlights on, I'm going to do create a clipping mask. There we go. Create, create a clipping mask, people. As you can see, we've added one pixel onto the top now that's doing the highlights. Let's do the shadows where we're going to give it. Sh yeah, everything's going to be darker. So, I'm going to click there, hold the S of uh, Shift key, and then click here, so that it keeps the gives us a straight line from A to B. You can do a bit of the same here. Yep, yep. Space bar in order to move the hand around. Space bar is letting me move the thing around like I'm doing. Alright, that's good, that's good. And now on the walls layer, I'm just going to do some erasers stuff. So make these corners that one pixel round, I reckon. I just want to. Make them feel, you know, a little less, uh, a little less, the corners feel a little. 
I'm going to create one new layer, and then I'm going to start creating with it some uh, patterns that I wish to put onto the top of the walls, just to give it some nice looking texture. And it's going to be like some assortments of random shapes. There's other things you could do to... make this like look pretty. And the more you add to some of these designs, the more they start to blend in and looks like part of the uh, nuts, the more it starts to look natural. Once you've done enough of this, which I just about I think I've done enough of. What I'm gonna do now is just select the area. And then just you know start hopping it around all over the place. Ideally, I should only be copying this on top of the walls, so that you know it's like clear that the uh, they're part of the walls. And I will be setting this layer to be a clipping mask again, so it will only appear on top of the pixels of the layers below it, which will, in this case, be the walls. It's a nice, quick way we can make the walls how we want them to look. Mm -hmm. I'll probably put this, la this layer just underneath, probably, definitely. I'll put this layer, oh, that's not a good place for that one. Uh, this will just have to do here. Actually, in other projects, you'll probably make a tile set, and that tile set will actually be, you know, correctly sized, and you'll have some graphs or whatever, but we're not doing any of that right now. I'm doing this fast just to keep this simple and sweet. I've moved this layer, level this layer 5, down to between the uh, edges, and the wall itself, so, and it's a clipping mask. It is as set as a clipping mask. This is saying release clipping mask right now on here. Does it show actually? I'm not sure you can see, if you can see it's where it says, yeah, release clipping mask. There we go. So now with this, I'm going to do that control shift S again and save this as a type PNG and rules.png inside this folder. Now just for the floor, I'm gonna just do something incredibly quick, lazy, and let's pick a, let's see, pick it, make, kind of make it orange, make it 50-50 kind of, about 30. 30 saturation, 50 brightness, uh, about 20 saturation perhaps. There we go, it's maybe 50, 45 brightness, there we go. And now I'm going to, uh, I'm going to do a thing, the dissolve on the brush up here, and I'm gonna set the size to big, and basically when you set the opacity really low on dissolve, you get this sort of, wait, let me get, change the color and so on. There we go. You're gonna see this like noise appearing on it. I like that. I like that completely. If I set the layer type over here to dissolve and then lower the opacity down, we take just a, there we go, we can tweak it till we get it where we want it. And then I'm going to do the same thing, but in the dark spectrum. So don't make it darker, da, da, da. and now, there we go. It's going to be the, control S that, PNG, PNG. So now I can take us back to the uh, programming side of this and the first thing I'm going to do is go into the body tag and I'm going to add those three pictures 
they, you can see them inside the now, the uh, actors, the floor and the walls. So what I want to quick do is make the image tags in HTML and the source is going to be our images that we just created, all three of them. That's why I copy pasted the source theme three times. Now I can put actors PNG, floor.png, and then the rules PNG. The immediate effect you'll notice is that the pictures are going to appear just right below here, not in a way that that's the something we don't actually want. So in order to stop that, I'm going into the CSS file over here, like we do with the body tag here, everything that's going to, we're going to make an image effector. And image is going to be set to hidden. Display hidden, isn't it? Display, oh, none. This way, all images that are put into here are just inherently hidden. In order to get these to display now, we have to, we're going to start in the display class, of course, and we're going to create a new class called Sprite. And like, and like all of our other graphic things over here, we are going to be extending the display object in order f so that it does, you know, everything a display object can do. So you know the display object will be a the dis as you remember the display object up here. It has a constructor. It has an x, y, width, height, visible parent, children, layer, blend, all those works. Half width, half heights. So all these other things, the children functions, the get and set layers functions. We're going to call up all of that when we just extend the display object, and then we're going to call its constructor straight off with the word super all over again. We're going to need a draw function. And inside now and the uh, arguments we're going to have to pass for this. So first we want to pass it a source. Then we want to pass it a x, a y, and a width and a height. Let's set some defaults in case we don't provide any. Oh. I want them to be zero. Width and height can be 32 by default if we do not skip it any. And then object.assign this. And then we just pass it all of those uh, arguments that we just passed at the top. X, Y, width, height. Oh, and the source. Yep, that's all we needed in the constructor. In the draw function, we'll pass it the context. Then, when we're in the context here, we just do need to do a context.drawImage function. The image function has quite a few arguments in it. So first, we want to pass it the source, then the, so, then the uh, source x, source y, source width, source height. I know this refers to is like where we were in our Photoshop thing over here. We want to think about things like, where did I put all the actors? Like this, if we imagine this image up here where we have all of these uh, actors here, we want to imagine the uh, exposition of the enemy. For example, over here, this guy, his source width and his source height, which would be 16 by 16. His source X is going to be 16 pixels in. If you, you know, look at you, you can use this, uh, the M tool to measure it yourself. Here's 16 pixels into this far, into this file here. The key is 32 pixels in, etc, etc. I'll be all tabbing to come back to here, but you're not going to be able to see me doing that while I'm in here. So, We need to know all these ideas about this. So I'll go to just, all right, let's go over these arguments again. This dot source is going, so this dot source is going to dot image is the first argument we're going to give it. So we're going to pass each sprite a reference to the image to use. The X position is going to be, well, the source X 
is going to look like this. Source dot y is going to look like this. This dot source dot width. This source height. Then we want to pass it its own sort of x y width height positions in the world. But this we do the half width minus this half height for its x and y positions. Then this width, this height that handles the drawing function there. Now this whole this dot source object. Let's actually uh, first off, first off, first off, first off. Function rectangle, right? We want to create and add it to the stage, the sprite. So, function sprite, source x, y, width, height, all the same, all of the same arguments we were providing before. Then inside there, we want let sprite equals new sprite with a capital S, because we are referring the class after x, y, width, height. Stage to add child that sprite and then return sprite. There we go. When we create a sprite, it's added to the stage. Yada yada yada. Last thing I just want to do now is address this uh, address this source. We want to create these source items which are going to have these x and y positions on them. So image is going to be there. And then it's, well, I've written it on my other page just to remind myself what I was writing. It's going to have the x and y width height height as the arguments. So it needs an image reference, x, y width height. And literally all we're going to do is return this object with the image x, y width height all written into them. Now back into the script dot js here i'm going to just, just do some control z to sec to get my game back to updating in all normal again yeah the game's back to running normal fine dandy smooth now now inside here the uh, make level function i'm going to replace this make player it out with these uh, handy dandy doubles here and what we're going to do is have a uh, let player equals sprite oh right yeah first we have to reference the images the images so how do we get the images that we have hidden down at the bottom of this page what we need is let uh, actors equals document Wait, 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 I can remember. It's not, I can't remember this. It's on load. Document get element by ID. That's what it was. Get element by ID. And then in the HTML for us, we need to get these IDs then. So ID equals actors. ID equals floor. ID equals wall. There we go. Now in this, this now back to script actors and then let rule equals documents get elements by ID and walls. Is it walls or just wall? Just wall. Now the blocks, first off, I'm going to create, uh, the, the, where we created this for loop for these blocks, I'm going to set block dot visible equals false. The first noticeable thing you're going to notice about that is that when we now run the game, you can't see the walls, but characters are still colliding with them, which is just bear with it. This is going to how it's... This is a, a, only a taste of in-between. You're not meant to usually see all this bit in-between, but you're going to anyway. Now, when we create a sprite, we need to give it this source. And the source is going to have a, the actors as the image. The x position was 0, the y position was 0, the width and the height was 16 by 16. Then, the x position of this player object himself is going to be 100 by 500 
and his size is going to be 32 by 32. Now if I do Control S and refresh, you can see the uh, sprite of our little playable character here is visible. Yay! And there's one more thing now. I just wanted to be able to show you guys. Uh, where is it? Yes, I think. No, transform, uh, switch to sc Hmm. I just want to make this really big a sec, so I can show you quickly. You might have noticed for a long time, why do we have the, uh, can I zoom out this? Not really, but oh well. This is going to have to do. One thing you might have like noticed here... No. Let's bring that back to the top, then bring that back to the top. When we had in our programming uh, commands, in the resize function, we had this context image smoothing innate like stuff, all set to false. Here is the reason why. As you can see here, this is this is not exactly good enough. I want to really show it. Can I like transform, edit, transform? I can just crop left by two hundred, crop right by two hundred, crop top by two hundred. Right there, go. Can I just? Uh, transform, fit to screen. Look at this. This is just. Can I make this even like worse? Like edit transform. I'm gonna just 400 by 400 by 400 by 400. Oh, maybe too big. There we go. Now you can see the the horrible mess this is. Just. just So, as you can see, this is with all the context image smoothing this innate like stuff set to false. If I set, but if uh, if it's all set to false, we get this pixel perfect look. But if I disable all of that again, when I don't, when I don't ask for it to do context image smoothing enabled set to false, then we get this result. This is the result that we get. Just to bear, just to make it clear and obvious to you people, this is why this has been here all along: is to make sure that this is nice, smooth, pixel perfect looking art. But especially where we are sizing it up. So if I do bigger dimensions on it, like 64 by 64, it's still per pixel perfect fine. If I remove all of this stuff, though. Then it's not pixel perfect fine. It's a blurry mess. It's even borrow you can even see a blur from the pixels in the image, just you know, the sprite next to it. So that's why we have all that like that. Put that back down to 32 by 32. Now the uh, let key is going to equal to sprite with a source inside it. The X position was 100, Y position 100, width and height. We can't do 32 by 32. We're going to have to change all that because the source um, material is going to be very skewed. So let me find out quick sec. The source X of it is 32 pixels in. 32 pixels in. 6 pixels by 16. So we want a uh, actors. So act, we want to in the source we want to give it the the actors image again. We want the X position, its source X to be 32. And then in here I'm going to make its dimensions twice the size. Clearly I've got a comma somewhere. Where is it? The uh, key has already been declared. Yeah, yeah. I have to comment this out. 
Hmm, I've only gone no I've gone one pixel not enough. Let's see if is it not Have I not done this correct? It's thirty two pixels in a six should be thirty two pixels in. 32 pixels in, should be giving... <sighs> Perhaps this is why when you do some of these, when you start stretching them around, you just... Oh right, the width should be 6 pixels. A lot of the time you might think, do you want to give some pixels a 1 pixel board or something? 6 by 16 Good for the height 6 by 16 Because if I'm... I can't seem to get this without a bit of overlap happening Oh, how annoying How annoying Alright, I'm gonna just quickly take this back to Photoshop sick So, these actors Where are they? Go post one to the left, door one to the left there and there. I think that's everything now separated by one pixel by each other so that they're not going to over they shouldn't be overlapping in the first place I don't know why but oh well oh I need it there we go crop this picture save it as and just overtake the previous file now we're back to here oh the floor is in the background or something is it the floor in the background something is in the background oopsie Back to Photoshop one more time, one more time. Yeah, we have actors, save and replace. Back to the, back to here. Hard reload. Why is this? Find it like oh, that layer was there. Actors save as replace. Yep. Now, if I do the refresh, they're gone. The source of this key is thirty four. Okay. Now the same for the door, let door equals sprite source and then the where would where, where, where we put in the door? 500, 125, 50 by 50 that's the x, y width and height the source, the source image is the axis again and the x position of it is going to be at 41 pixels in 41 pixels in zero pixels down the width was 25 and so was the height now if I control s that I put an s into sprites by accident now the door sh is not appearing visible odd Let's give it a small. Let's give it a small. Is it not 125 for the door? No, it's more like 250. 
Oh, 600 by 250. I've just put it underneath the uh, goalpost. That's why I couldn't see it. Huh. Speaking of goalpost, sprite again. The source, right? The uh, goalpost was 500 by 125. Uh, width height 50 50. The source was going to be actors and the goalpost. If I go back to my Photoshop, I'm just finding out the X position is 67 pixels in 67, 0, 25, 25. Let's comment that out. Let's put all of these together the uh, player, the old players, rectangle, and so on. They're all going to go there. Now for the two enemies. Coming them out again, and let's do them up here. Let enemy A equals, and let enemy B equals, and I could do a bit of copy pasting for these two. So the the sprite X position on our sprite sheet is 17, and he has a width and height of 16. 16, 16, and 17, and 17. Let enemy A is 150, let enemy B is 500, A is 200 on the Y axis, and B is 450 on the Y axis. 32 by 32 width height. Control S. Now we have the enemies bouncing in and they kind of... I might make these big... Do I want to make these bigger? It's, it's going to make them bigger like on a scale proportion. But uh, that's fine. Not really. I'm going to just make them slower in the move A and move B uh, functions now. They're moving a bit too fast for my liking. Let's add in the walls. Add in walls. Now, the walls are using a different image to the others, so we need to recall that. Uh, what did I actually call it? Yeah, I did. Oh, I already named it here. Silly me. Game. We can use the game width and the game height. Those are constants here, just to mark the. Actually, this is. Half the width, half the height. Then we can use the game width, game height. So I have to use half the width and half the height as the source's images is only drawn at half the scale. Now at least we have this image brought in of the walls. So we can see what we're bumping into now when we're smashing into these walls over here. That is good. God, it looks so... Uh... There's the floor yet, folks. The floor is yet to be brought in. Listen, in another time, and if I spent like five hours longer, I would... Uh... I would have given you a much better sprite artwork for this, but because this is like me trying to do this on the fly to give you a quick show of how to use Photoshop, this is a terrible sprite job, I know. I've noticed as well, we're going to have to change the door sprites and the key sprites again because when we're restarting the game they're getting remade and turned into rectangles again for now let's just deal with the floor so floor is going to be document docker element by id and it's going to be floor and then uh floor equals sprite not the capital with a source of floor zero zero four hundred and three hundred and zero zero eight hundred of game width game height I refresh that and the layer or the blend actually floor dot blend equals destination over the 
Lord.layer equals 5. Okay, yeah, this is a case of in the draw function as well. If this got blend, context.global composite operation equals this dot blend. There we go, there we go. Now we've got the floor drawn in. I kind of, I'm going to mess around with it just one little bit more. I'm going to make this half and half. There we go, very pixelated. Key blends in with the background far too well. You can sort of see this key is there. It's like, uh, I just barely make it out in the middle of the sand there. He doesn't, really look, he doesn't look any better when you pick it up either and attach it to the player. He really doesn't. And we also have this problem now. When we remake the level, it's... Um, when it remakes the level, it changes all these sprites again. So I need to comment these back out. And then let's see, make menu, no, 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 make, uh, make level. Let's copy paste that key in. So key is uh, that copy, this paste, this bit in. So level, that was the key I just copy paste, that I want to copy paste, there we go. Let's copy paste this, that one in, and then the door. Level dot door equals, I think, that fixes it. Well, not quite, actually. The only other thing I also need to look at is the, uh, the function where when you pick up the key. So it's it, the game loop, hit test the key with the key. The, hit test the level dot key, yep, and when we do this width and height, we don't want to do that anymore. I might just leave that commented out for now. So when you touch this key, it's added into your inventory. Did I really make all of these sprites this color? No, I haven't. So why is it that these colors are just so destructively bad? Have I done something in the make the floor in the draw floor function or something? Get rid of the floor. I don't understand why it feels like the whole background is just... It's like the colours just aren't there. Because you can see if we go back to the Photoshop... If I go back to the Photoshop, these colours are quite good. So when I go back to the um, colours here, for some reason the actor colours are just all bad. I cannot think of the life of me why that is, though. Is it the walls? If I take out this walls a sec, something is wrong with the walls. So have a look back into here. I'm gonna guess that what I've done. is I um, had another layer showing that shouldn't be showing when I had these walls showing. So let's hide all the actors a sec. Yes, that layer was showing. No wonder I was wrecking my own walls. Save as. There we go. We've made it transparent again. It should be saved. So if I refresh the uh, image back here again, and uh, bring the walls back. Oh yeah, they're back. Now if I make the floor again, uh, draw floor, let's bring you black. Let's bring you back in. Here we go. 
And it's a quick crash course in how we can bring in a bunch of sprites into the game. I would still recommend making some of these different, like the enemies are moving way too fast at the moment, I fear. So let's try, to, let's try this 200 by 200. I mean, even our starfish man, he is moving a bit too fast as well. If anything, I would like all of these sprites to be like twice the size. We could just play around that if, if for as long as we want. So make level. Let's make this like 48. Like 48. Let's change all these 32s to 48. The only problem is now, is the... Uh, he only just about fits through the doorway. Fat blob, he is. But the key, uh, I need to make this 18 pixels wide now. You see, um, even though we're changing the we're changing the width and the height of the sprites, we can still keep the source width and the source height, the source x. You know, all of the source's dimensions are going to be the same, so that we like can stretch this the uh, sprite as much as we want, and we keep it as pixel perfect as we want as well. Which also works in tandem with like the whole resizing and stretching of the screen around. That I think today's video is just about long enough. I've made a good demonstration, I hope, of how to replace all of your, all of your rectangles here with actual sprites, and you could go home and start using your handy dandy, your handy dandy iPad Pro, and featuring Medibang Paint. Use that to draw all of your sprites while well in bed. Then go back to your computer, notepad plus plus, and just do code all this in. It's there for you. I'll be calling this a night for now, and I'll see you in a future video. Ting.